Hey church kids and moms and dads, it's Mr. Damon, and I am so glad that you're here today. Do you know that you are a part of the church kids community, which includes kids from all around the world? That's right, countries all around the world. And you have an amazing opportunity to meet those other church kids and get to hang out with church kids pastors because we have digital parties which take place every single week online and to join all you need to do is scan this cool little QR code on the screen right there to get started today. Hey church kids, it's Miss Lily. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Oh my gosh, so cool. Just yesterday, I went to the movies. And not just like on your couch, in your house, but I went to the movie theaters. It's been literally like, what, a year, two years since I've been in the movie theater. I got to have this big old bin of popcorn. I went to the little butter machine. I hit the button and I did not stop hitting the button. And I went like, Woo! and I doused a bunch of salt on it. And it was the best. If you haven't tried that already, you have to try it. Well, I'm so excited to be here with you, church kids, because we are going to start a new series in the book of Colossians. But before we get into that, it's time for Question of the Week! My question is, have you ever thought ahead, you wanna do something so nice for someone, like your friend, or your mom, or your dad, that you did it, and then it actually ended up totally tanking? <laughs> like, bad, not good. Well, church kids, I was kind of thinking about this the other day, and it has to do with the book of Colossians, but we'll talk about that later. But when I was a kid, church kids, my mom was a stay-at-home mom, and that made her like a total super mom because she would like take care of us, and she would cook for us, she'd pick us up from school, and like really do everything she could to make sure that we had the best life ever. Well, church kids, one day that I remember specifically was when it was nighttime and my mom had done everything. And my dad, of course, helped too, but you know, she like made a super yummy dinner and she like cleaned up. And then at night, she was kind of like unwinding by watching TV. So I thought, you know what? I wanna do something nice for my mom. So I went to their bathroom, I got her toothbrush and I was trying to find toothpaste, right? So I'm like going through all these drawers, I can't find it, but then I eventually find it and I put a big old glob of toothpaste on her toothbrush and I walk so proud to my parents. I'm thinking, oh my God, they're gonna love me and I'm gonna be the best kid ever. So then I get to the living room and I give my mom her toothbrush and she's like kind of surprised like, oh, thanks Lily. And I was like, yeah, no problem. I got you, mom. So then she put the toothbrush in her mouth and I literally, church kids, have never seen someone or anything run as fast as my mom did to the sink. She booked it and she spit out the toothpaste so fast, like bleh, bleh. It was like totally gross. And then I hear, Lily! And I'm thinking, oh no, what did I do wrong? Like it's toothbrush and toothpaste, right? How could anyone mess that up? And she says, Lily, what did you put on my toothbrush? And I was like, toothpaste. And she said, no. So I had to go back to my parents' bathroom and I had to grab the toothpaste and I give it to my mom and she's looking at it. She's looking at it and her eyes like bulge out of her head. She's looking at me all angry, like the furrowed brows and everything. She's looking at the bottle. She's looking at me and she's thinking, Lily, you gave me Icy Hot. And church kids, if you don't know what Icy Hot is, you might wanna ask your parents because that is definitely not toothpaste. It's something that people use when their muscles ache and they kind of hurt. They like rub it on their skin and it kind of like cools their muscles down. Not supposed to go in your mouth. Ugh. Oops, I made a mistake and I totally thought I was helping out my mom because she was doing amazing things for us, but then I totally made everything worse. And I actually made her night kind of bad because she couldn't get the taste out of her mouth. Blah. Well, church kids, in the same way, when we learn about Jesus, sometimes people will tell us like false things about Jesus. Kind of like we're supposed to 
follow all these rules so that we can please God. And if we become perfect, robotic children and people, that Jesus will love us more. Well, that's making everything worse because that's not the truth. The truth is, is that Jesus loves you. And when we're able to trust in Jesus, build a relationship with Jesus, that is when we please him. And that is when we can build the best relationship with Jesus. Well, in the next few weeks, we are talking about the book of Colossians. I'm so excited because this is one of the best books in the Bible. And it was written by Apostle Paul. He was writing a letter to the Christians who were living in Colossae. And that's a really cool place because it's actually now in the country of Turkey. You can go visit it, which is awesome. Well, church kids, it was sad because the Christians who were living there were learning from these false teachers that if they, they had to follow the rules, and that way, if they did all the rules and followed it like line by line, that they would earn God's love, and then that they would grant access to heaven. But then Apostle Paul was like, whoa, 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 no, that's not true. So he wrote this letter to tell those Christians that you don't have to like follow all these rules to like earn God's love, because guess what? God already loves you. He loves me. He loves you. He loves those Christians. And that's what Paul wanted to tell them. He wanted to tell them two major things. He wanted to tell them that Jesus is the one and only God and that Jesus died on the cross so that we could develop the most authentic, real relationship with him. So the first thing is that Jesus is the one and only God. Now, if you've grown up in church, maybe you've thought like, oh, I've heard that like a thousand times. But if you're anything like me and you didn't grow up in church, like as an infant little baby, then I kind of had to learn this. So Jesus is it. He is the one and only God. Meaning that, you know, there's no like multiple gods and then like, oh, there's Jesus. No. It's just him. He is it. He's the one and only God. And in Colossians 1, 19 through 20, Paul says he was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection parade. He is supreme in the end. From beginning to end, he's there, towering far above everything, everyone. So what does it mean when Paul is saying that Jesus is supreme? Did he start the clothing brand supreme? No. Was Jesus a part of the Supreme Court? Also no, that'd be cool, but no. It means that he is the highest ranking. He's the highest authority. He is what some might say, the GOAT, meaning the greatest of all time. He was it, church kids. He was above everyone and everything else. Think of like your idol, like your role model who you just adore. Jesus is above all that person times like a million. And then think about how already amazing Jesus is. Now multiply that by a million. We don't even realize how amazing Jesus actually is. And I don't know if we ever will, but we get to learn more and more about him by building a relationship with him. And the second thing that Paul wanted to tell those Christians is that Jesus died on the cross for you and for me so that we could could be able to build a relationship with him. And there's something in this world, church kids, called sin. And well, what is sin? We talk about it all the time, but what like actually is it? It's the opposite of what God wants. So disobeying your parents and maybe not listening to them, that's the opposite of what God wants. But when we do listen, that is what God wants or being a good friend and loving other people. That is who God is. But when we make fun of others, that's not who God is and that's not what God wants. So we kind of realized that, oh my gosh, Jesus like lived this life, but then realized that we had this broken relationship and he wanted to fix it. He wanted to fix it so that we could have this amazing relationship with him. It was nothing that we could do. I can't fix my relationship with Jesus. And that's what those false teachers were telling those Christians. They were saying like, you know, it's kind of up to you if you want to fix your relationship or not, because you have to follow all of these rules. So then if you do, then 
God will love you, okay? You gonna be good? No, that is definitely not what Jesus wanted. So that's why he went to the cross. He went to the cross for us so that we could have this relationship with him, but also be able to trust him so that we could live full, amazing, beautiful lives. So church kids, when we realize like, oh my gosh, like maybe I have been doing this wrong. Just like my mom, when I thought, man, I'm doing the right thing. I'm putting toothpaste on my toothbrush and I'm gonna give it to her, but that was not the right thing to do. That's kind of like us when we realize, oh, Man, I disappointed Jesus and I have to be like totally perfect for him to love me. That's the wrong thing. We're actually like hurting our relationship with Jesus when we think like that because guess what? Jesus loves you. And he fixed our relationship by going on the cross so that we could live the most amazing lives and that we are forgiven. That's the biggest thing because we are imperfect people. We can't follow rules like one at a time perfectly because that's just not possible. But when we have Jesus and we trust in Jesus, then we're able to lean on him, talk to him. He's able to enter into our hearts and help us with whatever we need because he cares for us and he loves us. So church kids, I want to pray for you today. I want to pray that we just remember that Jesus is the one and only God. He's the one we can lean on and that he went to the cross for us so that we could live in his image. So I want us to pray today. Jesus, I just want to pray for all of the church kids listening today that you are entering into their hearts and reminding them that you are the true Jesus and they can lean on you for anything. And I just pray over all these church kids that they know that they can always come to you and that you are right there next to them, helping them every single day, every single minute. And church kids, if you want to become best friends with Jesus today and just accept that free gift that he has, then I want you to raise your hand on the count of three and I'm going to pray for you. One, two, three. Jesus, I just pray that you see these hands and I pray that you go into these hearts and that you completely change them. You just revive them and realize that they know that they are in your family forever, that they are going to be okay because you are their best friend forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Wasn't that an amazing message, church kids? One of the most powerful things that you and I can do to grow our best friendship with Jesus is to connect with and build friendships with other church kids. It's true. And you have an opportunity to do just that by joining our digital parties, which are taking place every single week. So go ahead and ask your mom and dad to scan this QR code to get started today. And we'll see you next time.